I've spent a lot of time in nature. I've spent a lot of time guiding people in nature. But there was something about 40 days and 40 nights of solitude that was incredibly profound for me. Just the scope of time alone. And what that meant is even if you, if you could imagine you go camping with a friend, you know, you might go for a long time, but there's always this one other person that you can turn to, that you can chat to, that you can tune your attention to. When you're by yourself, there's just, there's just no one else to turn to. And what starts to happen is over the course of time, it just continues. Your attunement to the natural world around you just continues to deepen and deepen and deepen. And the solitude, you know, as you said, like sitting around a fire with lions roaring and night jars calling and the stars above you every night alone for a couple of hours, not reading, not checking your phone, not, not tuning into anything, just being. It was like this incredible depth of stillness that was establishing itself in me. And, and it just got deeper and deeper. And then, you know, sort of a kind of a magical thing starts to happen around you. I, I actually think of it in, when I mean, you mentioned the integration, but I think of it as the first part when you go alone into nature is a kind of shedding. You know, there's a feeling of like pulling off a shell, the shell of modern life. And what's actually happening is you're kind of getting your attention back. If you imagine your attention's been in all the things of the world, the news, the latest crisis, your phone, WhatsApp, you start to shed that away. And as that starts to happen, the, the Aboriginal people say, you know, modern culture is three days deep. I, I really love that idea. The feeling that after three days in nature, there's like a shift in priorities and you just feel yourself come back to yourself in a really interesting way. Then the next phase after shedding that I, that I sort of experienced was a kind of a tuning. And what happens is, is because your attention is not being pulled in every direction, you start to just focus on nature around you. And the way that I think of it is like, when you attune to something that is alive, nature is alive all over around you. It makes you more alive. It's like if you attune to tech and to, you know, that kind of digital space, you become almost robotic. And you attune to the organic energetic field of aliveness around you. You feel yourself becoming more like that. So I always say, you know, where your attention goes, your life goes. The next phase is just a kind of radical simplifying where your day, you know, oh man, our lives are so complex. There's so many things we have to do. There's so many things coming at us. When you're out there for a long time, it's like the day gets this incredibly simple rhythm and you're very productive, but you're still and at rest. And then suddenly something moves in you and you have a task you have to do. You have to fetch firewood. You have to make a fire. You have to go track an animal. And, and you do that and you're totally present in that. And then you move back into rest. And there's this like cycle of, of simple action and then rest, simple action, then rest. And I felt like it was teaching me how to live. You know, it was like teaching, helping me remember how to live again. And then the final part has been the integration, as you mentioned, which, yeah, man, it's living in a tree is so unique. You know, you're living in this alive ecosystem. You're up, <laughs> you're living up um, in the branches. So it's almost like the aspect of your life is different. You're looking down at life below you, gives you this unique perspective that you live in. There's like a freedom to being up there in the branches. You you get to know the animals around you. And then you come home and it was quite an adjustment to uh, being back between four walls. I felt, you know, I literally felt quite like boxed in again 